Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome myself, Dr. Chandrika Naik, Professor of Biochemistry at Manipal Academy of Higher Education. I have to present a topic to you, but let me make an introduction to this topic. Let us have a lid opener to this topic. Let us say I have about 3 to 4 vegetables and about 4 to 5 spices. Can I just make only one dish or can I make a variety of dishes? or rather an n number of dishes. Yes, I can do a number of dishes with just the few vegetables and the few spices that I have. This is very much understandable and we all know this fact. Now come let us apply to the topic that I am going to start today. It is post translational modification of proteins. So why did I make this lid opener? That is because we have to understand how this helps in making the proteome diversity or rather we can generate n number of proteins in our body with just the few genes that we have inside our nucleus. So, what are the learning objectives for today? It will be introduction to proteome diversity, why are proteins so diverse? Let us understand before that what is translation or in simple words what is protein biosynthesis? There are different types of protein modifications. We will try to understand those types. So, one among these types is post translational modification of proteins. So, we will study the definition, then we will go on to the significance, the types and examples of the various PTM or post translational modification of proteins. And finally, let us try to summarize and then quickly revise with some MCQs. So, let us begin. To begin, let us understand the central dogma of life. What is it? We have a precious molecule inside the nucleus of our cell. So, let us imagine we have a human cell. Within the human cell, we have a nucleus. Within the nucleus, we have the chromosome and the genes hidden in them. When we need to make a copy of this DNA, that is when the cell has to divide, we make a copy of this DNA. We make one cell into two cells and we make a copy. What is that process called? The process of calling or making a copy of DNA is called replication. So, please have a look at this slide. A copy of DNA happens by a process called as replication. Now, you have replicated the DNA. A time comes when you need to do protein synthesis, but the information is hidden inside the nucleus. Protein synthesis happens outside in the cytosol. We cannot get the DNA out into the cytoplasm. We need to get a copy out. Now, this one is by a process called as transcription. So, when you make a copy of DNA and get that copy out, that is by a process called as transcription. So, transcription, get the copy out, you have the RNA material out. Then, how do you make proteins? You have the copy outside in the cytoplasm. What you have to do is, you have to use these RNAs and then make your protein. So, from RNA, if you look at the slide now, if you make a protein using this RNA information, that process is called translation. So, using the RNA copy, you make proteins and that process is called translation. So, you have the proteins. So, once again, the central dogma of life, if you look at the slide, making a copy of DNA is replication. When does it happen? when the cell divides, you want two copies. 
if you want to make protein synthesis you get the material out in the form of a copy or a transcript that process is called transcription and what is translation using the RNA if you make proteins now this process is called translation so that's the central dogma of life we'll learn more about this translation and the changes so the same concept i'm repeating here a cell with the nucleus with the dna material inside it and usually when there is a cell the dna material is in the form of a chromatic network when the cell divides it condenses to chromosomes how many chromosomes does a human cell have it has 23 pairs or 46 chromosomes that is in the condensed form fine yes now what is a genome genome means as you can see in the side or you can refer to this the genetic information of an organism all the information about our genes is hidden inside the nucleus and this is called the genome of a human cell where is it found it's protected or encapsulated inside the nucleus it should not be susceptible to damage what happens if you damage mutation diseases so you have to protect it encapsulate it inside the nucleus so that's our precious genome and how many genes do we have to run the entire body to sustain the life how many genes do we have inside the nucleus it's not a small number it's about 20 to 25000 genes hidden inside the nucleus that's our genome so we now know what is genome let's go further to transcriptome so what is transcriptome i just told you a few minutes back we don't get the DNA material out every now and then. It always remains there safe in the locker. We get only the RNA copies. So what is transcriptome? Transcriptome is every gene transcribes to form mRNA. And all the mRNAs inside a cell is called transcriptome. So we have many, many transcriptomes coming out when there is a demand for protein synthesis so transcriptome means all the mrnas of a cell now if you have 20 to 25000 gene the number might double or even three times more of transcriptome now how did we make with just 20000 say we make 80000 mrnas how did we or try to multiply the numbers that is through different mechanisms so please have a look at the mechanism how to increase the number from 20 to 25,000 it's going up now that is by genetic recombination or transcription initiation at alternative promoters or differential transcriptional terminations so that is the mechanism one more mechanism where you have alternating splicing happening and so from one gene if this is one gene on the dna you have promoter sequence here you try to make copy only till here if you copy and stop the termination let's name this as protein number one you start the transcription copy only till here stop the termination of transcription you get transcriptome 2 or mrna2 continue further you get transcriptome 3 that means you try to make various combination various lengths of mrna and from that you make various proteins so that is increasing the transcriptome fine we know what is a genome hidden inside the nucleus we know what is a transcriptome all the mrnas of a cell let's proceed for further what is proteome proteome means all proteins in human cell so what is proteome it's the complete collection of proteins in an organism encoded in its genome so all the proteins that we have from our head to toe is the proteome of a human body and what is proteomics proteomics is just a branch of science which deals with the study of proteins and how did we magnify the proteomes 
how much do we have? It is just 20,000 genes. But ultimately, how many proteins do we have in our body? We have about 1 million proteins. So, we have magnified the number. And how did we magnify this number? With just 20,000, you made 1 million proteins. That is what we have to understand today. And that is post-translational modification of proteins. So, once again summarizing, before we go to PTM actually, you have genome. Look at the slide, genome 20 to 25,000, transcriptome number went up further and how many proteomes or proteins? It has gone up further, magnification, it is about 1 million proteins. So, how did we magnify? That is through various procedures and one such thing is the post-translational modification. But before the topic uh, post-translation, we should be clear with what is translation. For a common man, what is translation? He will say it is protein synthesis. Translation is a tra scientific term. So, it is simple process of synthesizing proteins. And then where does it happen? It takes place inside the ribosomes. So, DNA, let us focus on this gene, transcription, get the mRNA out, from the mRNA send them on molecules called as ribosomes, the mRNA sits on the ribosomes and then you copy it and what do you get finally? So, where does protein take, synthesis take place? by sitting on the ribosome. That is why ribosomes are called the protein factories of the cell. So, there is a three letter code here for every three bases one amino acid remember that. So, three one amino acid next three bases one more amino acid what is protein? A chain of amino acids. So, the information is translated mRNA information translated and you get proteins. So, you require mRNA, transfer RNA as well as ribosomal RNA. So, let us come to protein modifications. Once a protein is made, it is not directly used, maybe few of them will be directly used, but some of them have to be modified. Protein modifications are of two types, that is First one, if you look at this slide, it is called co-translational. That means, as you are synthesizing, you are modifying it, co-translational. That is, takes place during synthesis itself. But there is one more we have to study today and that is post-translational. That means, you make the protein and then try to modify it. And that becomes post-translational modification. So, it takes place after the translation. So, today's topic focus is on post translational modification. Let us start with the definition, then we will go to the significance, why does body have this and then we will go on to certain classifications and examples. So, let us define what is PTM. It is a chemical change or an enzymic change on a protein after its synthesis. So, what are the different changes? How can you modify a protein? First one, trimming. You have a protein, trim it, that is one process, you modified it, right? So, first type is you remove a part of the protein, trimming process. Second one, chemically modify it. On the protein, you have amino acid. Do some chemical change on it. It becomes a modified protein. So, that is the second one. Trimming, chemical modification or then after certain use in the body, we try to degrade the protein. Now, protein degradation is also a change. You are trying to change it and kill it or destroy it. So, let me repeat. Post translation modification can be trimming, or it can be chemical modification or it can be degradation process. When and why does protein 
translational modification take place? Why does post translation modification take place? So, it can happen any time in the cell cycle, any time of the life cycle. Why do we do this? Why do we need? You have a protein, right? You use it. Why do you try to modify it? That is because remember the initial fact what I told you. We just have 20,000 genes, but how many proteins do we need? 1 million. So, this is one of the mechanism to increase the number of proteins, to increase the diversity. So, it can happen immediately after protein synthesis. Say for example, let us have a protein in the cytosol, but you do not need it for this cell. You want to send that out of the cell. That time you need to fold the protein, package it and then send it out. So, you need post translational modification when you have to send something out of the cell or you want to direct it to its destination. I told you protein synthesis is on ribosomes, but you want to send it to some other organelle in the cell. You want to send it here. That time you have to direct it. So, that time you change the protein. Let us make a sequence, let lead a sequence and send it there. So, if you have to send it somewhere else or if you want to activate an enzyme or inactivate an enzyme or you want to tag it for duration. That is you have a protein it is already destroyed, you want to uh, further end the process. So, you tag it and kill it. So, these are all the reasons why we try to modify proteins, fine. So, what is the significance? One more time, it generates heterogeneity. You can make more numbers. It is critical for the study of cell biology. If you have to study about cell and its life cycle, you need the knowledge of PTM. It is essential to understand diseases. Certain diseases are due to proteins and abnormal proteins. So, you need PTM knowledge for that. And it plays a role in therapy also, not just understanding the disease. You have to treat the disease. For that also, you need PTM knowledge. And you have to understand this for various research purposes also. So, what are the types of PTM? Trimming or shortening, covalent modification, enzymic change on the amino acids. So, it is chemical modification and modify the protein and finally, protein degradation. That is you actually try to tag it and destroy it. So, what are the three types of PTM? Trimming or reduce the size, chemical modification, change some chemical group there and third one try to degrade the non-functional proteins. So, let us begin with trimming. Where does trimming take place? Any of these organelles, it could be on the ER, the Golgi, the secretory vesicles or even after it goes out. So, trimming can happen anywhere. And how do you trim? You have proteolytic cleavages and you want to activate a big protein into a functional protein. So, these are the situations. So, let us give examples, let us give examples and remember this trimming process. The first example, proenzyme activi activation. Let us take the example of stomach. In the stomach, we have pepsin. Why do we need pepsin enzyme? We need it to digest our proteins. Now, if you keep pepsin active all the time, you know what it will do? It not just digest your proteins, it will corrode your stomach wall also. So, after some time, it will lose the stomach lining. So, pepsin is always secreted as pepsinogen. So, I will write it on the board for you. Pepsinogen is the original protein. When food comes, when protein comes, you activate it into pepsin. How did you do this? The big pepsinogen, you chopped a portion, you trimmed it, you made pepsin. Now, this has become active. So, this is one example for trimming. Let us go on to the second one that is activation of the pro hormones. For example, you, all of us know about insulin. Do you think we produce directly insulin? No, we first produce pre pro insulin, trim it, make it pro insulin trim it and then make it insulin. 
So, it is not directly released as an active hormone. We make it as the pre forms trim, 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 and then make it the active hormone. So, second example for trimming is the activation of hormones. And then you have certain peptides. There is a big precursor peptide in the brain, and from one peptide, by trimming, you make about four or five active peptides. The best example is this one uh, that is the POMC peptide in the brain from which you make the various hormones like melanocyte stimulating hormone or ACTH and the ones which are given on the slide for you. So, from one peptide by trimming you make many peptides. So, that is about trimming. Let us go on to the second type the covalent modification. You are trying to uh, modify the groups. So, you are attaching or removing or modifying and covalent modification can be reversible or irreversible. That is you can make it stay for some time and then convert it back. So, some are reversible, some are irreversible like what you see on collagen and then some modification that happens on the nucleus proteins that is histones that is also a type of covalent modification and there are some which are non enzymatic you do not need enzyme it spontaneously happens like what you see in a hemoglobin. Hemoglobin glucose goes and attach and you have the glycated hemoglobin no enzyme insert automatically it is getting glycated. So, let us begin with the first one and that is phosphorylation. So, what is phosphorylation? You are actually trying to add a phosphate group or remove a phosphate group and make it active or inactive protein. So, it is the most abundant type, it is a reversible process. When time comes, we add, time comes, we remove it with the help of hormonal regulation. It is crucial in cell cycle and cell growth. It will regulate the enzyme activity and there is addition of phosphate group where do you actually add the proteins? Let me give you a picture for that. Glycogen synthase is my protein. I can add a phosphate or I can remove the phosphate. When I add a phosphate, this enzyme becomes inactive. If I remove the phosphate, this becomes active. So, this is the classic example for phosphorylation. So, based on stimulation. So, you have the hormone glucagon. Glucagon stimulates this process makes glycogen synthase inactive. And what about insulin after food? What does insulin do? You have food, insulin comes, stimulates this process and makes glycogen synthase active. And then you store all the food that you ate, glucose that you ate as glycogen. So, this is the best example for phosphorylation. Added the phosphate or removed the phosphate. So, is not this a reversible process? Yes, it is a reversible process. So, you need protein kinases to do this and you need protein phosphatases to reverse the change. So, that is about phosphorylation. Let us move on to the next example of covalent modification, glycosylation. As the name tell you, you are going to add a sugar group. So, it will help in folding the protein, packaging it and sending it out of the cell. So, any protein, if it is destined to go out or to some other location, the best change that we do, the best PTM that we do is glycosylation. So, you just add one sugar molecule or multiple oligosaccharide chain. You add it to the protein, modify it and then send it out. So, you can link it to the aspargine, we call it N linked or you can link it to serine, threonine, then you call it O linking. So, you have N linking or O linking of glycosylations. So, these are all for the proteins that are destined to go out of the cell. That time you will do this change, glycosylation. Let us move on to the next one, hydroxylation. That means, you are adding an OH group. So, you have a protein if you add a OH group, then it becomes the 
hydroxylation. So, hydroxylation of proline, lysine, we see this in collagen, we do this during collagen synthesis. What is collagen? The protein of our bone. So, you need vitamin C and with the help of vitamin C, we try to add the OH group. So, when you add OH group to protein, this PTM is called as hydroxylation. Most common example is our collagen. So, why do we do this? By adding this, we are actually adding to the stability of the collagen. Collagen as you know is found in bone, it needs tensile strength. So, you add this residue, it helps in cross-linking, bone becomes strong by hydroxylation. So, it favors glycosylation and also increases the tensile strength of collagen. So, it makes bone stronger. So, we finished with the third one also, hydroxylation. Let us move on to the next one and that is carboxylation. What are you trying to add? Now, you are trying to add a carboxyl group, COOO group. Where do you see this? The best example is clotting factors. So, please have a look at the board. You have clotting factors number 2, 7, 9 and 10. If you have to make this clotting factors active, then you have to add carbon dioxide. So, if you add carbon dioxide to the gamma carboxyl group of glutamic acid, that is called as carboxylation. And we are doing so, what are you doing? You are activating clotting. So, clotting factors 2, 7, 9, 10 undergo this type of PTM. And why do you do that? Because when you add the carboxyl group, to these proteins, what happens is calcium will get chelated and when calcium chelates to the clotting factors, the clot process starts and you have the clot. So, why does carboxylation take place? Because you want to trigger clotting process. Next, let us move on to biotinylation. This is very simple biotinylation. You are just trying to link the vitamin biotin to its enzyme. So, it is just addition of biotin to the enzyme, which is that group of enzymes to which biotin is attached? It is the carboxylases. So, all carboxylases require biotin. Addition of biotin is biotinylation. So, it acts as the prosthetic group and helps the enzyme act. So, it is a very simple process biotinylation. So, let us move ahead to acetylation, you are adding a acetyl group now. So, you are trying to acetylate, which is the common protein which undergoes acetylation? It is the histones. Where do you have histones? You have it inside the nucleus. In the nucleus with the DNA, you have the histones. Now, the histones can undergo acetylation. So, this is a PTM for histones. And it is also reversible when you want you acetylate, when you do not want you remove the acetyl group. And why does, why do you do this? Because you want to affect the gene expression. And remember this is a type of epigenetic change. So, it is a heritable change and it is an epigenetic change. So, where does acetylation type of PTM take place? On the histones found in the nucleus. Lipidation, the name itself tells you, you are adding a lipid group. Which are the lipid groups? It can be a palmitoyl group, it can be a farnesyl group or it can be a meristoyl group, any fatty acid for that matter. If you attach fatty acid to the protein, it is called as lipidation. So, why do you do this? Because Every cell has a membrane and this membrane is lipid in nature. Membranes are lipid in nature. If you want any protein to go and occupy the lipid, then you better try to bring about lipidation. So, you have a protein synthesized here, you want to target it to the membrane and make it a membrane protein, you better attach a lipid group to that and then send it there. So, once you have that, it will go and occupy easily the membranes. So, lipidation is for proteins when you try to move them towards the membrane. 
So, this is also for any other membrane not just the cell membrane, the ER membrane, the mitochondrial membrane whatever you wanted to send it to the proteins uh, membrane right. So, you add a lipid, add a fatty acid and send it there. So, this is a PTM. So, one example I have given you how GPI anchor uh, helps in tethering the proteins to the surface of the membrane. So, you add an anchor and send it to the cell membrane. So, one more type we finished and comes the third type. So, which were the three types of PTM I told you? Let us remember once again trimming, chemical changes or covalent modification. Now, the third one and that is protein degradation. You know there is a protein, let us try to, this is a protein, it was a functional protein, suddenly there is some change in it, it is losing its function, we do not want this protein anymore, so we have to degrade this protein and if you have to degrade this protein, you better attach or tag it with a group called as ubiquitin. The moment it attaches to ubiquitin, it is recognized by the proteases or proteasome complex and it will be totally degraded. So, what is protein degradation? Tag the protein, make it recognized by proteasome and try to degrade it. So, if there are some misfolded proteins, defective proteins, non-functional proteins, you just tag it with ubiquitin. So, you just attach ubiquitin. So, by attaching what are you doing? When you attach ubiquitin, it becomes sensitive to degradation. So, ubiquinated proteins then undergo degradation. So, this is one more type of protein modification or PTM. This one is irreversible. Covalent modifications few of them I told you it is reversible. Add the phosphate, remove the phosphate, they are all reversible but this one is irreversible. Once you attach ubiquitin, you cannot reverse the process, the protein is lost, it is degraded. So, what is the clinical relevance? Why do we need as medical students, why do we need to know PTM? What are we going to understand or use this knowledge for? If there is absence, deficiency of PTM, what will happen in the body? It will trigger autoimmunity. You will not have the normal protein, it becomes a different protein. Now, the body recognizes this different protein as non-self. If it is self, body allows the protein to remember, uh, rem remain there. But it, if it is totally different, body says this is not the normal protein. And so, it triggers autoimmunity and starts degrading all the normal proteins also and that becomes disease. So, proteins modified may trigger an autoimmune response. So, it becomes the basis for disease. And we have seen in variety of diseases like rheumatoid arthritis or systemic lupus erythematous or primary biliary cirrhosis. These are all the conditions where PTM has a role. So, let us try to summarize what we have done. PTM exponentially increases the proteome diversity in nature. Sorry. So, let us try to make a summary of post translational modification of proteins. So, why do we do modifications? The first important thing, we need to make more proteins. How many genes did I tell you? 20 to 25,000 genes. But how many proteins? 1 million proteins. So, how did we magnify this number? through increasing the transcriptome first level and the second level is post translational modification. So, PTM exponentially increases the protein diversity. So, it can be used for regulating various activities may be cellular activity, cell growth, cell death or apoptosis, signal transduction all these places we are going to use the post translational modification. And why do we need post translational modification? Compartmentalization. You have a protein, you should send some to mitochondria, send 
to the lysosome, some outside the cell to compartmentalize, some you have to send it to the cell membrane. If you have to send or compartmentalize the proteins, you better do a change and that change is PTM, post translational modification. And how do we do this? You can add a carbohydrate, you can add a nucleic acid, you can add a fat and try to modify it. So, protein uh, sorry post translational modification happens after the synthesis. What did I tell you the term when it happens during synthesis that is co-translational. Today's study was not co-translational, today's topic was post translation all modification happening after the synthesis of a protein post translational. Then what are the three types I kept telling you trimming that is cut it make it a new protein first one. Second one I told you covalent modification add a chemical group or remove a chemical group covalently modify it that becomes one PTM and what was the third type of PTM I told you protein degradation you ubiquitinize it and then degrade it. So, I repeat the three types of PTM are trimming, covalent modification, protein degradation and then chemical modification among the three which is the most common most diverse it is the second one covalent modification or chemical modification you can use any name for that fine and then PTMs can be reversible, PTMs can be irreversible. Let us give an example for reversible. I drew the glycogen synthase activation, inactivation. You add a phosphate, you remove a phosphate that is reversible. Irreversible like what happens pepsinogen to pepsin, irreversible. And then the knowledge of PTM mechanism will help you to understand the disease, prevent the disease, treat the disease. So, let us test your knowledge in post translational modification. Let us me give you a first question. Which of the following protein undergoes phosphorylation type of PTM? Which one of them? Is it insulin? Is it glycogen phosphorylation? Or is it collagen or histones? I told you glycogen synthase, but you have to you see that in glycogen phosphorylases too. So, glycogen phosphorylation you see phosphorylation. Second example or second question, what is the significance of hydroxylation in collagen? Why are you trying to add OH group in collagen? Is it to improve structural stability? Is it to increase the activity or degrade it of a gene expression? Which do you think out of the four is the best answer for collagen? It is for structural stability. So, you see the answer here it is to increase the structural cell. Let me give you two more questions. Third question, which of the following PTM is seen as a epigenetic change? Change on proteins in the nucleus, acetylation, glycosylation, phosphorylation or ubiquitination. If you remember I told you about histones. So, it has to be acetylation and then finally one last question and that is which of the following types of PTM is seen in the activation of pepsinogen to pepsin. I told you this was the first one I told you pepsinogen you make it pepsin when food arrives which was the type was it biotinylation was it trimming was it phosphorylation or was it lipidation. Yes, the answer is trimming. You trimmed it and made it the pepsin. Fine. That is all I have for you today about PTM of proteins. Thank you.